Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadonks the Born, but build for theme parks and welcome to a theme park chat video, the Coast Shell Chat series, uh, where we're gonna be talking to the latest and the greatest in the industry and outside the industry as well. This interview you guys didn't see this coming, um, but I did a video uh, just a few weeks ago, just a couple of weeks ago, about talking of the, the seven new projects that SNS have uh, released for 2021. So we're going to be talking through that today, and who better to talk it through with than Lars Lenders of SNS? Lars, how are you doing? All good, all good, going strong. Thank you. Brilliant. Great to hear it, mate. And um, the first question actually just sums up the whole thing, really. I mean, we've got to go through this and we'll put the uh, the poster uh, on screen while we talk about this. Um, three 4D free spin coasters going to Adventureland in Iowa, uh, Motion Gate in Dubai, an Ocean Flower Island in China, uh, an air launch coaster at Changsha Window of the World in China, two combo tower rides in China, and a space yacht tower in China. Overall, a, a, a good range of investments there. So, you know, what do you make of all seven projects and how they're coming on at the minute? Yeah, so we're really excited about uh, all seven projects. Obviously, it's been a great year for us uh, to be able to open in these uh, circumstances, you know, for, for, for this year. Um, so we're really excited, you know, to, to really bring something new to, to the people and to, uh, to, to the park operations. Um, the park managers are really overexcited to, to get this in and to, to boost the, uh, the gate attendance and also add capacity to their, uh, to their uh, facilities. And obviously, uh, you know, offering a great uh, attraction as an additional experience. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, all seven of these attractions are just—they just sound amazing. I mean, you know, you guys know on the channel we've covered uh, specifically the. Uh, uh, Adventureland 4D Free Spin, the Dragon Slayer, and also we've covered a little bit on uh, John Wick Open Contract at uh, Motion Gate Dubai. But all these investments, we spoke about them in the video uh, when this was announced, all these seven projects all together for this year. Uh, we spoke about them and we knew how brilliant and excited we were about all these additions. Um, so the next question really is in terms of the Free Spin coaster specifically we're going to look at. Um, in terms of how did these projects come about like how did the um did you approach the parks or did they approach you to to ask for a free spin coaster especially you know adventure and motion gates i think those are the two that uh enthusiasts are most excited for here in europe and over in america with uh with this adventure park getting this new free spin to replace their old hopkins looper and of course you know motion gate getting the free spin theme to the john wick movie franchise yeah, so the, the, the product of the 4D uh, free spin is really unique because we can actually control the amount of spinning going on. So we can actually, uh, uh, you know, tone down the experience uh, to the demographics of the specific park. This is a um, specific uh, uh, product uh, uh, specification that not many other products have in the industry. And this, this way, this product was ideally suited for, for, for some of these parks. Um, uh, typically, you know, we, we keep very close contacts with our clients and we, it's an ongoing conversation where a lot of these, uh, say, budgets have been uh, pre-communicated, uh, you know, so they're long-term investment uh, plans that these parks have. And we have, you know, our job is to custom design these coasters to their uh, specifications and to the parameters they're, they're giving us and to, to really take the, the attraction to its fullest potential within the site parameters and, and all the uh, requirements that they have. And this way we've come to uh, some unique uh, setups for, uh, uh, for their parks. So in that sense, it's, it's, it's always an ongoing process with the parks um, where some of them, you know, they, they were looking for something very specific and some of them we were already in contact with uh, for their uh, uh, long-term budget uh, plans. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, you know, I'm personally really excited to see all these attractions around the world in China, in America, in Dubai, all come to life in 2021. Um, and you know, speaking about the free spin coaster, it's a wonderful, exciting concept. And I'm sure at, at SNS Sunset Technologies, you must have a lot of concepts stored away. So, you know, we've seen recently the stuff about the spin shot tower with the the 4D free spin seating in a drop tower format. Is there any other exciting concepts you could potentially tease us about a little bit? 
Well, I mean, it's interesting you you mentioned the uh, uh, the spin shop because obviously that is something that is also being retrofitted to existing towers around the world. So that's really exciting for a lot of uh, existing tower owners that can actually upgrade their attraction with a minimal investment, also with the capex restraints uh, at the moment. Um, but for sure, the, uh, um, the, the the there's a few new product developments we're looking at. Um, we are now looking at uh, obviously the the fact that you know a lot of these parks have, have capex uh, uh, restrictions in, in terms of a lot of their uh, projects are on hold or have been postponed. We've been looking at uh, a new product development that actually uh, keeps the um, the costs low uh, for the attraction. Um, I'm not yet allowed to say a lot about it, but uh, we hope to be able to bring it uh, into the open in the next, say, coming months. So for sure, we'll be contacting you know you to uh, to, to to report about it. Uh, but right now, it's still in the making. But uh, we can. Uh, it's going to be a family attraction for sure. It's going to be also the the one meter uh, height uh, uh, restraint. You know that is very important for a lot of parks. And yeah, we're really really excited about it. You know, uh, typically a uh, 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 an attraction takes two years to, to get built from contract to completion. Um, and now we are performing all the pre-engineering for these uh, new uh, concepts. So we're going to be presenting it in about a month's time to uh, our customers first, and then um, we'll be getting into the open area. Yeah, and it sounds like this this new family attraction. Hopefully, we'll hear more about it in the coming months. And of course, you guys know we'll talk about it on the channel when the information is released. Um, just speaking on the spin shot towers, I know many enthusiasts want to hear about this. I know you can't give anything away, but like you said about uh, bringing this new style drop tower to existing drop towers, do you think? And I'm going to be generally honest here; it's a bit of fun. Do you think Ice Blast at Blackpool Pleasure Beach could get those spinning seats in the future? Because I'm sure a lot of fans want to see the brand new regeneration of Ice Blast at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. <laughs> or Cliffhanger, yeah, so, uh, or Cliffhanger at Flamingo uh, Land. <laughs> I mean, we're absolutely talking to all the uh, UK parks, so that's uh, uh, that's a fact. Uh, a lot of them are looking to become the first in the UK, so this is also you know a little bit of a race. Um, but also there, you know, it will take at least another year before that, uh, uh, you know, from contract to completion, even in the retrofit uh, situation uh, for the upgrade. Um, so that also will take another year. And we are now at the verge of, of, of you know, a negotiating contract. So hopefully we'll be able to communicate something uh, soon there as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it would be exciting to see those spinning seats on uh, on Ice Blast and Cliffhanger and all these SNS attractions. And it'd be good to see a free spin in the UK as well. Um, so looking, and this kind of leads into the next question, really. So I've got here, many enthusiasts really want to see um, these rising attractions at different theme parks. So is there any possibilities, you know, in terms of UK theme parks, you know, speaking out in the open, not really releasing any details about any deals or any contracts, etc. But is there any dream parks in the UK that you would work with? Because I think if I was SNS, I'd wanted to work with, you know, Alton Towers, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Thorpe Parks. I know they, they've been needing a new roller coaster since 2012. But would you work on, like, what kind of theme parks out in the open would you want to work with, with SNS specifically? Right, so we're we're very excited about the two new projects that have been announced uh, in the media: uh, the Blackpool Central uh, project and the Paramount uh, London Resort project. They are obviously very long-term projects and huge amounts of money involved, and uh, you know a lot of uh, say milestones they have to uh, reach. But those are the two projects we're really excited about uh, as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, of course, you know, all our existing clients, the, the Merlin uh, group is, 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 we're very close to them uh, for a lot of their parks. Uh, um, so we really want to work with them as well. Uh, also because they're such uh, uh, you know, uh, experienced operators. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, we really want to work with, with, with people that, uh, uh, we, we like to work with family owned parks because they, 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 uh, they really care, you know, so. Also, we want to work with people that really care of, of what they're doing. 
Yeah, 100% agree with you. And, um, you know, speaking about those family-owned parks, you know, there's parks out there like uh, Poulton's Park, Flamingo Land, uh, loads of different UK parks. And as you said there at the beginning, I'm really excited to see what's going on at Blackpool Central's development and also the London Resort. And you guys know that we've covered the London Resort since this project was, since we started this channel pretty much, um, about this park. And, you know, we can't wait for that to open hopefully in 2024, as well as this Blackpool Central development. Um, so speaking of next, Next, um, how has the uh, COVID-19 pandemic affected s, &S productions and how have you guys kept it going? Because I'm sure, like many other manufacturers and theme parks and attractions, you've had to keep going in a certain way. So how have you kept this going? Because it must be absolutely extraordinary times for the, for the theme park industry in terms of keeping the manufacturing process and the negotiation process for new rising attractions ongoing throughout this pandemic behind closed doors. No, for sure. I think, you know, the, the, the big advantage is that a lot of these parks have, again, you know, these long-term plans. So they had already, you know, decided on their long-term plans before the COVID. And then, uh, you know, some of these plans have been adapted and, and changed, but I think a lot of them have uh, continued. Um, the, the advantage we had is obviously uh, because of the fact that, you know, attractions take two years to, 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 to uh, come into effect. We had a good, uh, you know, uh, order book to already take us into the uh, 21 and the 22 season. What we're really looking at is 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 a potential uh, uh, slowdown for the coming, uh, say, two or three years, where parks are uh, um, some of the parks don't even have opening dates yet. Um, and, you know, some Scandinavian countries also don't have opening dates yet uh, from their governments. So. Uh, they have been closed, you know, a lot of them have been closed or, 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 or deprived last year. But I think this year, you know, things are going to be opening up again. Um, but if they don't, then uh, it could really be a, a, a downturn for the coming two, three years in terms of production. Uh, but for now, we don't see that uh, uh, happening yet. Also, um, to give you an idea, the, uh, the Middle East has not really closed up. Uh, they continue to, 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 to you know, proceed with their investments. And also uh, the, the uh, Asia PAC uh, countries uh, uh, are, are really upcoming again. You know, China is continuing with all their investments. So right now the Middle East and, uh, um, and say Asia are, are carrying the market. Also, a lot of the U.S. parks are, are down uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, operational uh, um, investments um, for the future. So it's, it's going to be a, a tough uh, few years. But again, because these are relatively long term projects, we tend to, 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 to work uh, a lot ahead. Yeah, 100%. And uh, it's great that you guys have kept going throughout this pandemic, as has, you know, everyone uh, as best as they can. Um, so to end the interview, then, I thought we'd have a bit of fun again. So um, I've got this kind of proposal. Now, it's not, again, it's nothing to do with, you know, what contracts you've signed or anything like that. This is just a bit of fun. So if you could pick one UK park, one European park and one American park to work with that you haven't worked with yet on whether that's a coaster or a drop tower or refitting a drop tower or any kind of new attraction, uh, whether it's an existing concept or not at the minute, um, what parks would you want to work with? What UK park, what European park, what USA park would you want to work with? Because I think if I was s and I'd be choosing a Six Flags park maybe, and then for Europe, I'd maybe go with something like F-Telling where you could put loads of theming around it. And for the UK, I'd go with Poulton's Park since they're an ever-growing theme park. But what would you choose? Right. So I, I personally, I also like the uh, Legoland parks and the uh, the Windsor and uh, um, the, the Windsor uh, Legoland. And uh, I think also the, uh, you know, a lot of the Merlin parks are, you know, fit for uh, for some new developments. And I think, um, you know, they, they own obviously a lot of uh, UK parks and uh, a lot of their uh, parks are in the top 20 EU parks as well. So I would choose uh, um, uh, maybe the Legoland uh, Windsor or indeed the uh, uh, Chessington or uh, Hyde Park uh, are all very uh, interesting um, projects to, to work for. Um, then in Europe, uh, you know, we are um, very close to family owned parks. Um, we are also, you know, very close to the Bali B parks here in, 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 in uh, Europe. Um, I would say, you know, I would choose to, to, to work 
uh, again with the uh, Etna land on uh, Sicily, on the, the island of Sicily in Italy, um, which is uh, a great park, uh, a water park next to an amusement park um, and holds great potential for the future as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, you know, just um, sort of expanding on that, uh, if you could choose one American park. Sorry, what what American park would you choose? Because there's a lot of them out there. Yes. So obviously, um, we uh, like this Six Flags group. Also, they 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 have a lot of parks. Also, and um, also the the the, um, the European group uh, has uh, partners in in the uh, United States as well. Um, I think the Six Flags group is a really a uh, uh, great group to work with in that sense, and they own a lot of uh, parks, so they also know what they're talking about and they know what they want, which is also uh, um, great, you know, in, in, in the sales process. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And also, of course, the, the Disney parks are great to work with. The which Disney park? parks are great to work with as well. The Disney parks. Yeah, I'd like to see more thrilling rides in the Disney parks as well. Um, Lars, thank you very, very much for this interview. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you very much to Lars. And thank you to you guys for watching this. My name is Coach Shy YouTube channel. Keep living the coast of life. Please, please, please like, comment, subscribe if you love this video. We're trying to get to 4,000 subs by the end of the year and 1 million views. So please do that. And for now, guys, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an SNS-tastic day.